I'm Norm from Tested, and building computers for PC gaming is one of my favorite things. We've teamed up with Origin to have some fun with PC building and PC gaming. Join us on the series as we take on build projects, explore science, and test cool stuff to feed our curiosity. Together, we're Team PC. Sean, I have a really interesting experiment I think we can do today with our gaming PC. Cool. I want to visualize components in the PC heating up with a thermal camera. Excellent. Now we know uh, CPU, GPU, those are the components that need cooling and yeah. they heat up when you're loading up your games. Mm -hmm. uh, but just how hot do they get and how does that heat dissipate and actually get cool? Uh, well, we have this thermal camera. It's made by FLIR. It's the model 10, a T1030SC. Sean, now what's cool about this camera is that it's incredibly high resolution. Um, it's an infrared thermal camera and it actually records at 1024 by 768. So that image that I'm looking at of you right now, that is all your heat imagery. And I can even change focus. Wow, it's just insane. I'm so curious to see what PC components will look like under this camera. Uh, what do you want to test first? GPU. Yeah, definitely the GPU. Yeah. All right, so let's have this case open, start up a PC game, and have the camera maybe from both sides. Yeah. Okay, Sean, so this is a GTX 970, and we have it set up in a case where we can see both sides of the graphics card. Now, what do you see here on the back of the card? The back plate's not showing a whole lot. Uh, the surface itself doesn't look too hot, but you can see uh, the heat coming through the holes that are drilled into it. Hmm. And now when we flip the card around, we'll start up the game again, uh, you can see the fans don't spin until it reaches a certain point. And now the fans kick in, and you can see the heat sinks. Now, definitely getting hot, but the fins and the fans themselves don't seem to be changing a lot of color. They're not no. getting very hot. Unfortunately, we can't see the GPU chip itself from this shot, but it is really cool to see how hot the card is relative to the cooling elements. On to the CPU, the brains of the computer. Now we have it with the heatsink and fan. Uh, what are you noticing here? Definitely seeing a, a heat halo right around the CPU or on the board. The cooling fins are actually not showing a lot of heat, but I would assume it's because they're actually doing their job. Yeah, relative to the heat around the motherboard, that's surprising how hot that motherboard gets. But I want to see the actual CPU itself. So let's take off the heat sink and fan and try it again. Now, we ran into an interesting problem because the CPU shield here is reflective. So this thermal camera actually can't register the heat on that. Mm -hmm. But we do have a solution. We're going to apply some uh, fiberglass tape on this, which is used in high heat uh, electrical applications. So it will resist the heat of the CPU while giving us a reading. Okay, and then booting up the computer and running Prime 95, a very standard benchmark. It's very taxing on the CPU. Wow, heated up immediately. Yes. And you can see it's still spreading to around the motherboard, but that CPU is hot. Now we still can't see the individual cores on the chip because of that shield, but it is interesting that the CPU is running and the computer isn't crashing. Sean, that was super cool. Yeah, it was. Yeah, but something interesting happened. Now we set our range to our thermal camera to be 16 degrees Celsius to about 100 degrees on the high end. Right. And uh, that's at that temperature, that's when CPUs throttle themselves. Right, and we are seeing that it was only running about 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.9 gigahertz on a 3.5 gigahertz chip. That's right. So clearly, uh, it, even though we were stress testing it, it was clocking it, itself down. It was protecting itself. Mm -hmm, because yeah. we didn't have the fan on. Right. Now, what if we were to maybe actively cool it somehow and, uh, and try to overcome for that throttling, overcompensate for that heat. Right, right. With something like maybe cooling. <laughs> the old upside down trick. Right, upside let's, down trick. let's do it. I want to see what this does. Something you should definitely not try at home, but we got to try it. Oh, absolutely. All right, let's set this back up, get the camera in front of the CPU, boot it up, and throw some coolant on there. Okay. Okay, Sean, you ready for this? Oh, yeah. All right. So I got the CPU running. You can Stro tell it's hot. It's throttling. It's Again, we're throttling. around 0. 0.6, 0. 0.9 gigahertz. And I'm going to put coolant on there okay. in three, two, one. 
Oh, ho, ho. No, it jumped up to like 2.8 gigahertz. Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. Holy smokes. So I did not think that would work at all. Wow, let me try again. <laughs> all right. Oh, th that time you got up to like 3.4. That's so that's legit. Like, and, and it goes to show that the, the chip is really good at protecting itself. And also any dra dramatic changes in temperature, mm -hmm. it will adjust its clock speed um, to try to run it its fastest for that temperature. That's really responsive. That's amazing. It's fascinating. And I'm surprised that the computer still works. It's still running. Yeah. Holy smokes. Now, obviously, something not practical. You would never do this. You would have a CPU fan cooled on that chip. But, you know, in a jiffy, you could just yeah. spray some coolant on it. Yeah. All right. Tested.